What are you doing here? Oh, hi. Well, I'm doing one last review of our itinerary before the big day tomorrow. And I want to make sure I can stay within my comfort zone of less than 300 miles a day and still cross this long blue line and make our deadline. So ultimately, can we make it all the way to Yuma by the 15th? Hello. Is this the universe telling me I'm not supposed to go to Yuma, Arizona? Set it on the counter, go to the bathroom, zip out, and let's roll, right? I forgot the water. Lost our GoPro 9 today. I've never been one of these. I think this is super cool. Here's the deal. We're supposed to leave on Wednesday for Yuma, Arizona. But you see all the snow, right? Lots and lots of snow. We didn't quite expect 12 inches and some ice. We hope it all melts by Wednesday so we can pull our slide in. But we're looking forward to this work camp situation because we've never done anything like it before. We're ready to try something new. It'll be till April 1st and we'll get to stay for free at the Palms RV Resort. We're gonna have some fun there. <laughs> Wish us luck that we can leave by Wednesday. If not, we'll have to leave by Thursday, but we have to be there by the 15th. Wish us luck. Pretty good. Ever wonder what your RV would look like in some snow? Well, look no further. Our outdoors RV is buried in it. Today, we're just trying to get all the snow off as much as we can. Don't try this at home. And everything's slippery, so we can't Extremely. get up on the roof. Is this the universe telling me I'm not supposed to go to Yuma, Arizona? I don't think we should let that <laughs> determine our fate. Actually, it's the universe telling me that I don't like the snow. What about me? Sorry, Mackenzie. <laughs> what about me? So our rig will have a mohawk. Yeah, because we can't reach the middle, right? Correct. But I can at least reduce some of the weight. Ice in there. We are determined to make this work. And yes, we could have pulled the slide in, but it was not expected to be this much snow and ice. Yeah. Can't neglect our trucky, huh? No. Just because it's a three-quarter ton doesn't mean it's meant to carry snow. <laughs> yeah, diesels don't really care for the cold weather, huh? I don't like the cold, no. no. I don't have an engine block heater, but it's not sub-zero. That's true. So we're okay. Okay. It's uh, the day after the snowstorm, and man, that was a whopper. We did not expect that, because it was, what, like 60-some degrees the day before? And then we woke up to a blizzard. Who yeah. does that? I know. It was so nice and warm. We were in t-shirts. Yeah. So everything's confirmed. Boondockers welcome. Uh, the campgrounds we're staying in. We have a few places in Texas where we have no idea we're going to stay, but I have an idea. I think we can do some of those community uh, parks, which will be fine. Otherwise, we'll just boondock somewhere. It's melting. The we're... sun is shining. Dude, we're doing this no matter what. It's go day, it's Wednesday. Hi! Getting one, one more, more play in the snow yeah. before we leave. We're getting ripped on, at least everything's melting. So. And our theme of leaving <laughs> hours after we're supposed to, that's what stresses me out the most about that, is, is we have a Boondockers welcome expecting us, hopefully before dark. I get a little anxious under those circumstances. That's why I like boondocking, because no one expects you. <laughs> you get there when you get there. To be fair, we had a day of snow that we couldn't load stuff. And, no uh, excuses. Yeah, no excuses. <laughs> and there's still snow. A challenge, as always, but we'll get there. There we go, Max. What do you think, bud? Are we ready? Yeah! Here we go again. Here we go again. Going out of this crazy driveway. Bye. Oh, look, it's a nice ring. It's 
like boondocking, you know? On the dirt road, yeah. it's made of ice. Brings back boondocking memories. This is the third time we've left our, our home base in Delaware. And the first time, I think you guys maybe remember in one of the videos where we just kind of had that eerie silence of like, oh my God, what do we do? And the second time, it took a while before we were kind of back in the groove. And now on this third time, it took a little while to get all our stuff loaded. It's always longer than I expected to. But falling back into that rhythm and that routine of being full time on the road, it's almost instant. It's cool. I have to agree, it didn't take very long. Sunny, sunny. Until we were like, yes, okay, we're back on the road. We're good. This feels normal. It felt really nice and got right back into the groove of things. So, exciting. So when we pulled the slide in, we ended up having some chunks of ice far in the back there. We couldn't get it off because our ladder was not tall enough and we were definitely not going on the roof. It was too slippery. Put some towels for the drive on either side to kind of soak up the water so that it wouldn't go off the side and go down on our floor. And the problem solved, I think. Today we're heading to Tugaloo State Park. Good morning. It is, I believe, Friday morning. We're at Tugaloo State Park campground and it's beautiful this morning. We're right by a lake. We booked this campground because it had a dump station, water, full hookups, everything. So we could dump our tanks and fill up with our water. Unfortunately, it looks like this dump station is out of service for some reason. It's kind of the whole reason why we booked this campground. It was a little bit of expensive, but it was worth it. So anyways, we have to find another place to dump along the way. So a minor hiccup. Fingers crossed we find something. Uh, I'm sure we will. Friday morning. We just left Tugaloo State Park in Georgia. That was a long day. Everyone did well, but we're definitely getting tired of these long days. We're headed towards southern Alabama today. Another 400 miles, so another long day. Wish us luck. What they find? The Georgia Welcome Center. We found a dump station. Hey, we just arrived in Bay Manet, Alabama, our Boondockers Welcome site. This is a beautiful little site, so we're just getting all set up here. Hey, Homer and Bart. We just left a Boondockers Welcome site in Bay Manet, Alabama, and it was a wonderful experience. The hosts were super welcoming, and the property is beautiful, wonderful sunset, and they have some very kind animals on their property, donkey, goats ducks, chickens that they sit with every night around sunset, which we thought was really cool. So they were super helpful, super nice. We highly recommend that spot. On 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 Morning guys. I don't want to come off thankless or unappreciative of the opportunities that are given to me, but I am worn out trying to fly across country so quickly. This has been hard. Some people say they can do a lot of miles a day. I don't like doing a lot of miles a day. 400 is over my comfort level. It's wearing me out. I don't sleep quite as well under these circumstances. Well, you get it. But the whole time I'm questioning, is this what I really wanna do? I've committed to this time at the resort, but we don't need a free location to stay. We boondock all the time, it's what we do. So I'm not saving any money. It's just a convenient hookup. I'm just trading time now for something that I didn't have to have to begin with. But again, I committed to this and the whole principle of this channel is to challenge ourselves and do something that gets us out of our comfort zone. So here we are. And halfway through this trip, I know that I'm going to spend over a thousand dollars in fuel just to get across country. And during that time, I'm skipping some of the sites that we wanted to see. Yeah, I'm questioning my decision, but I am going to stick to my commitment. I just wanted to put that out there halfway through, knowing that, you know, if you decide to do something like this, you may have second thoughts. So follow along. Let's see how this turns out. And hopefully it's all for the best. Thanks for watching, guys. So we kind of lost our GoPro 9 today. We didn't physically lose it. We were in a location where I had some Wi-Fi and it was like, oh, let's update the firmware finally in this thing. It had not been updated for a long time. So I go through the cycle, I update it. it, says finished, all done. Back screen goes black. Start up, turn on, turn it off. 
won't do it. The back screen remains black. I decided, okay, let's see if there's a fix for this. So, you know, you type that in. Google already has been typed in a bazillion times where this has happened before. Update firmware in GoPro 9, and the screen goes black, and it won't come back on. But you go through the forums, and they say, okay, do this manually. So I put the same update I already did, I put it on the SD card, nothing changes. Of course, the forums keep saying the community support you'll need to contact us. So I go through the whole tree of that, chat with a, a representative, insist that it is not the firmware, that it was just a defective camera. Even though it's out of warranty, they were kind enough to say, we're going to send you a new one, but we need that one back. We live on the road, so sending something in is tough. And now when it comes back to our home base, when do we get that? So if you have a GoPro 9 and you haven't updated it, I would be cautious about updating that GoPro because right now to fill in the gap we're going to have to spend another 500 clams just to go out and keep filming the way we do. Now, this is a nice camera but it's kind of hard to do in the truck. I mean yeah. if you see it moving right now it's because it's heavy and Rose is shaking and <laughs> it's going down so that's kind of upsetting even though they're willing to replace it which kudos to them good for that but it doesn't do me any good right now. We'll make this right. Check this out. <laughs> we just learned a really really valuable lesson. Rose says you should get out and check that first to make sure it's not too muddy. Pull through, get totally stuck. I vaguely remembered seeing someone say, when you get stuck really bad, use your Lego block risers. It worked, but uh, we're a little muddy. I don't know if we're supposed to plug in or not. Check this out. We're lit up. That's awesome. Uh-oh, we forgot yeah. about the okay, cup. So I go in and go to the bathroom at our last stop and I bring the water in with me, my water cup, set it on the, the counter, go to the bathroom, zip out and let's roll, right? I forgot the water. So it's sitting on the counter, which now has probably fallen to the, to the floor and it exploded open because it's one of those plastic okay. cups. Well, you'll see it. It's a plastic cup that has a pull off lid. Let's see. Let's see. <gasps> it's no water. Oh my gosh. But, but look at that. It's, it broke it. Oh yeah, it did. But th that's better than water everywhere. You ever see one of these cups? Buy it and then drop it. That lid stays, stays shut. on. Damn, I'm thirsty too. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, things are looking up. Yeah, so we're at the Winnie Fairgrounds in Winnie, Texas. We found this on iOverlander. It's free. There is an electric outlet hookup thing, as you see. So we're gonna use it. So far, so good. We're level, side to side. Muddy. We did get muddy earlier uh, in that mud mess, but we learned our lesson. So we're gonna set up and uh, hopefully have a good night here at the fairground. to give you an update of our travels as we're heading to Yuma. We're in Van Horn, Texas. It is freezing, but we're looking forward to that warm weather. We have about 700 miles left to get to Yuma. You hear that road noise? So we have been going cross country averaging 330 miles a day and it's definitely pushing our limits. One thing that I've sort of succumbed to is we like to boondock, right? We like to get out and be away from all the people and be in a quiet area and have the stars. But man, when you're going that far and that fast, it's nice to have a place to already stay. I don't care about the cost at this point. I don't care that we even have hookups. I just care that we have a place to stay. It's convenient and it's fast off the highway. So when we're moving that quickly, we have just decided that these parks that we're staying in right now are so much easier. And we're all ready to slow down. So here we go. I'm Matt. And I'm Arielle. And we are, are our, our zoo, zoo plus two. <laughs> this is their schoolie. Yeah. 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 And they're still in the process, obviously, of getting it all together. But wow, I've never been one of these. I think this is awesome. super cool. This is so cool. 
the backsplash. It's all real metal in here. I love all that. Beautiful. That is awesome. The bed will be on the shower. Park, mm -hmm. But then this table drops down and oh, those cool. floors underneath there pull out. Oh, look so at this that. becomes the clean That's size guest bed. Yeah, we've actually then, been using a lot and the table extends out. Yeah. Yeah. And that oh. one comes out so that that bench goes all the way across. Creative. Look at that. Yeah, so we can all sit around the table. That's nice. Induction cooked up. It and it, we it runs off of the batteries. Okay. So with the solar in the whole nine yards, we can cook three meals a day. We can run full-size fridge. Uh, the air conditioner runs off of the solar, full-size microwave, and we can make it no problem through the day as long as there's sun all night, and then as long as the sun comes out the next day, we'll be good. I'll show you our shower. Oh, That's like my favorite. Oh, part of the class. favorite. <laughs> it's like, fully tiled. Cool. That's yeah. fully residential. Yeah, fully residential. The kids' room, double bunks. My sister did all of the stars and moons on their Aww. bunk space. Um, I bet they love it. They, yeah, they love it. Um, they all have USBs and little lights, and this will eventually be a nice bookshelf and trimmed off. Fantastic. There's under the bunks we have storage. Like this is all. I don't know if we're gonna. Crazy tacky. So wow. we just built our protein. The Gerard hot water heater, the instant yeah. hot water heater. Yeah. Yes. So instead of having, you're not supposed to do this, it says it right in the manual, but <laughs> instead of running the water through it, we run coolant through it. Mm. And that goes to these radiators here. One there, one in um, the bathroom, one in the kids' room. And that heats the bus. And then the hot water goes through an exchange that, that heat, like there's plates that are against each other, an exchange plate. The heat from that, the coolant passes to the water. It's like an air to air heat exchange system, so he but with fluid. But with fluid, yeah. <laughs> so it just runs off of these thermostats. And the one goes into the coolant. So if the coolant gets too hot, it transfers it over so it doesn't overheat the heater. We're almost to Yuma, about 300 more miles or so to go. We are so excited. Yeah, this is a new opportunity for us. And I wanted to stop and take a moment and sort of give you guys an idea of why we're flying this Cannonball Run style drive to Yuma. Before we left Dover, some of our friends on the road said, hey, I've got an opportunity to work camp at the uh, Palms RV Resort in, in Yuma. My first thought was absolutely not. You know, we yeah. sold the business, we're not working, we're out here right. to boondock, we've got a channel to do. And then it hit me, you know, we've gotten comfortable with boondocking. Yeah, I feel like we're good. we're good at it. There's no anxiety anymore. I've mm -hmm. gotten very comfortable with backing the trailer up. In other words, all these challenges that I had, they're starting to become easy. And I'm like, man, I need another challenge. <laughs> and maybe you, as someone watching this, maybe you wanna know a little bit more about what work camping is about. What I can't tell you is how to find the jobs or anything like that. What I do wanna do is sort of give you a follow along view mm -hmm. of what this experience is gonna be like for us because it's short term. We're only gonna be there through April. And right now it's already, mid -January. we're in mid January. Mm -hmm. So it's a quick one. And that still allows us to get off of the resort frequently in boondock and do the right. things we want to do it allows us to get into california and do some of the things we want to do because we're driving distance and we can just leave the trailer mm -hmm. so it offers opportunities and i hope that you guys can follow along and learn something about work camping because it could be an option for you right. i don't think it's going to be something we'll continue to do i think it's going to be something that is just a new challenge a new experience and something i can pass along to you we'll see how it goes Thank goodness for Best Buys. This is what you do when you need a new camera on the fly and you can't wait for the other one that's in the mail. Kind enough for GoPro to replace that for us. It's awesome. That means we'll have the three cameras that we need total. But when you got to pull off at a Best Buy right in the middle of Tucson, God, it feels good. It's worth it. Back in the truck, we got our GoPro. It's working great. As you see, 235 miles to Yuma. Here we come. Hearts away Happy morning from Yuma. It is bright and sunny here in this blue sky with these palm trees. What a gorgeous environment. But I wanted to go over some of those numbers that we had talked about in the beginning of this video as far as what it cost us to drive cross country quickly with a travel trailer. And in total, we spent $941 on diesel. 
we spent $131 on campgrounds and boondocker welcome fees. And then we did $185 in groceries. Now, it took us long enough that I needed to go to the grocery store, so I have to lump that into it. So in total, we spent $1,257 to cross the country quickly with the travel trailer. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And the usual, like, subscribe, comment. We really like the comments. Those help a lot. Any support you can give by buying gear or donations on Kofi, that's K-O-F-I. New thing to us, not accustomed to asking for donations, but it is extremely helpful. I can't tell you how expensive it is to, wait, I just did, to live like this. So again, thank you. We'll see you in the next video, and I'm gonna tell you all about what it's like to work camping.